For days, Florida felt the rains and the winds from Tropical Storm Gordon. So the question now is, how has that storm affected our red tide? ABC Action News reporter Melissa Mahadeo is looking into that from Pinellas County. Good evening. Well, I'm standing on the beach. The water looks clear. It smells like the ocean and there are no dead fish in sight. But for what that means in the long run, I went to the experts. The winds have worked in our favor, but with Tropical Storm Gordon also piling on rain, what happened to the algae bloom? So we don't honestly know what this storm did or didn't do. Pinellas County Environmental Management says it depends. If it's just in the upper part of the water column, it can break up the cells. They're fragile. The more you can mix the water up and dilute that bloom water with water that does not have red tide cells in it, the, the better chance there is of, of uh, dispersing and diluting the bloom. But Moat Marine Lab says too much churning could fuel it, and Pinellas agrees. If the wave action gets too deep and starts stirring up, the muddy bottom or stirring up the bottom, you start to put those nutrients up into the water column. For now, they both say these satellite images and regular samples are the best indicators. This time of year um, often has conditions that are appropriate for a bloom. So since a bloom is already in the area, there's reason to think that it, it might stick around. Another issue from red tide is the toxic air, which has created respiratory issues for many people. So that same wind out of the east helping to keep red tide off our shores is also pushing that toxic air away from us. For right now in Pinellas County, I'm Melissa Mahadeo, ABC Action News. The FWC just releasing a new red tide map that seems to show, show some uh, good news because of Tropical Storm Gordon. Take a look. You can see much lower concentrations off of Pinellas, Manatee, and Sarasota County coast there. Only two locations registering high levels of the algae.